Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about Room Acoustics 101. Transform your listening experience. We know the room contributes a lot to what we hear. Here's what people really don't understand. They don't really understand how much. They think the amplifier, the speakers, and all that really are the uh, major producers of the energy, which is true. But once that energy leaves that speaker, the room owns it. So we could discuss all day long about what percentage the room contributes to, to what you finally hear. I could even make an argument it's over 75%. People say 50-50. It really doesn't matter. When the variable is that high, you have to pay attention to it. We have two problems in small room acoustics. We can boil everything down to two main issues, pressure and reflections. That's what low frequency energy looks like in your room if you could see it. It's huge waves of energy oscillating throughout the room and it's long and it's tall. Okay, so let's think of those as pressure waves like ocean waves. Then in this graphic we have reflections. That's more straight lined energy. That's more shorter wavelengths. And those produce reflections which interfere with speech intelligibility, center channel image in two channel, reverberation times in large venues. So pressure and reflection are the two main issues. Low frequency pressure is called wave energy, obviously by the way it looks. It's waves, right? Then we have middle and high frequency reflections which are termed ray energy. So these are the two energy forms that we have going on in our room. With pressure, produce room modes. We all know what room modes are. That's unwanted pressure between two, four, or six wall surface areas. Floor, ceiling, sidewall, sidewall, front to rear wall. So it's unwanted pressure. Now, that can attenuate and exaggerate. We all have heard the expression bass boom, well, that's an exaggeration of energy. Attenuation means you don't hear anything at all. You can have huge suckouts at certain octave bands and not hear those frequencies at all. So we don't want any of that. Reflections obviously interfere with speech intelligibility. We always have that diagram with our two channels and our listening area. And we have all these reflections that bounce off of it. And what does that do? It interferes with the direct energy. The direct energy, the straight line energy from the speakers to your ears, that's the purest energy you'll get because that doesn't have less room sound in it. So we have to be careful with all of these things. Reverb. How long a, stays, a sound stays around in the room after it's been sung, spoken, or played? Large rooms have reverberation problems. People think it's echo. Echo, it's not echo, because echo is a repeating signal. Reverberation is not a repeating signal. It's a summation of all the reflections from the wall surface areas, with each wall surface contributing about 17% to the total problem. That's a good construct and a good way to think about it, okay? Every room surface area has a different frequency and amplitude issue. This is a problem in large rooms. We see it all the time. You see the same treatment on every wall surface area. That's not going to solve a lot of the issues from those surface areas. Reverb is really the core frequency range that you have to manage with reverb is that 125 to 500 cycles. That's where speech intelligibility lies. That's where you have to provide the treatment at. And a panel one or inch and a half, two inches thick is not going to get that for you. Okay? There's no one size fits all. There's no one treatment that works in all locations. You have to analyze each wall surface as if it's its own room. And that kind of attention to detail will push up the resolution in the room. And that's the goal, isn't it? Ultimate resolution. That's what we're seeing. Uh, you know, looking for in our rooms. That's what we're after. So we want to minimize each variable that we can. Pressure management treatment. 
takes 12 to 16 inches. When you have a small room and you have low frequency energy that, don't, that doesn't fit, unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to make the room smaller through treatment. So we got to give up 12 to 16 inches to treat low frequency issues. Reflections a little bit less space involved, four to six inches on average to treat the reflections. So different technology, different energy, wave and ray. So we have different technologies that work for it. We got to make the room smaller to treat the issues. Room dimensions, it's so critical to start with a good width, height, and length that matches their, your usage. Think of your box as a glass of water. You can only put so much liquid in it. If it's 16 ounce glass of water, you can only put 16 ounces in it. You try to put 24 ounces in it, that eight ounces is gonna spill. That's distortion. That's room modes. That's speech intelligibility issues. That's reverberation times. So that kind of distortion we want to, you know, get rid of. We don't want to, we want to minimize it. And we minimize it by providing a big enough surface area, a big enough volume to match our usage. If you're a drummer, your requirements are going to be way different if, than if you're a vocalist. Different frequency range of energy, different amplitude, different strength, different room sizes. In acoustics, when we're building new rooms, we try to get two of the three dimensions favorable. Physics is math-based, so there's certain numbers that work well together. There are certain widths and lengths and heights that produce less distortions, and that's the balance that you want to have. In acoustics, we try to get two of those three favorable. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. But if we can get the width the height and the length all working together to minimize the lower frequency pressure issues, we're off to a good start. And that's the goal. What else do we have? Dimensions must minimize low frequency pressure issues. That's the goal. We try to minimize the axial modal issues in a room and obviously the coincidental issues. So we want to make sure that we work on the pressure side first and foremost, because that takes the thickest amount of treatment, takes the most treatment. So we want to choose dimensions that minimize those pressure problems. It takes a long time to figure that out. I have three databases that I jump between constantly to do those calculations. So when you call or you fill out your room form and say, what's a good ratio? I can't produce that right away. I can give you some general guidelines, some ranges, of width, height, and length to use, but coming up with a perfect combination is, is, takes time. And it can be done, we do it all the time for new designs. You guys that are in existing rooms, well, your dimensions are fixed. So we have to work with those issues, okay? What else do we have? Sacred ground area. This area here, in front of the speakers, and in front of the listing position. You can't have objects there. You can't have coffee tables, you can't have statues, lamps, things like that. Because our goal is to have straight line energy from the speakers, a direct line of energy. That's what we want. So if you've got tables and coffee tables and lamps and ornamentation and ottomans and all of this stuff, those produce reflections which interrupt that straight line energy. You put a coffee table right in front of that, what have you done? You've created more distortion. So that's sacred ground. We call that sacred ground. That was actually the name of my studio in Hollywood. So keep that area free so that you can actually hear the straight line energy from your speakers and then minimize the impact of the reflections and the pressure from your room. What do we got here? Elevate your subs. Get them off the floor. You don't want a low frequency producing device right next to a room boundary surface. And please keep them out of the corners. We want quality sound. We're not after quantity. 
Putting a subwoofer in the corners can increase distortion 3 to 6 dB. Our goal is to minimize distortion. The way we minimize it is a whole series of eliminating the distortions. First, we have to identify, and then we have to eliminate. And that's the goal. And there's 30 or 40 variables that we have to consider. So one by one, we have to address these issues. That's why when you send in your room forms, pictures are so important to me because it tells me what you've done. I can immediately see a lot of distortion and I can help you make those corrections. And then we can work on the treatment side of it. So Room Acoustics 101, transform your listening experience. There's a lot of variables that we have to consider. And we take it step by step. We start with low frequency issues first, because they're the biggest elephant in the room. We've got to provide a lot of treatment. We have a new uh, series of uh, room resolution videos out there. Watch those, because those are for three groups of people, the beginner, the intermediate, and then the real professional uh, mastering engineers who need high resolution rooms because the higher the resolution of the room, the less issues an engineer has to work around. A good mix engineer with a lot of talent can overcome almost any room because he can identify the issues and make the appropriate corrections. A hobbyist, a person who's a semi-professional, not going to be able to do that because they don't have the experience. So the goal is to minimize the distortions of the room so there's less distortions that you have to work around. Less distortions produces greater workflow, a better product that you can sell. So Room Acoustics 101, transform your listing experience. It's a step-by-step -step process. Most people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. And planning is the most important thing you can do because there's just so many variables. Some you're going to be able to overcome, some you're not. But you need to know what those are. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.